Hey guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today we are up in Michigan and we're on vacation with the family. Cece and my dad are here on the boat. Sierra and my mom are back at the cottage. We're headed out on the water to hopefully catch a bunch of big smallmouth. Come along, let's go fishing. So basically we headed back in time when we came up here to go on vacation. We've been talking spawn, we've been talking post-spawn, but the guys in the north, full-blown pre-spawn right now. So water temps today are 48 degrees. We actually arrived yesterday, we went out on Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan, we found 38 degree water. So it is early pre-spawn out there, full-blown pre-spawn here on the inland lakes. Today's going to be fun. We've seen the comments lately from guys that are like, post-spawn, we're not even spawning yet up north. The guys that have been with us for years, you knew that you would be included. New guys, we appreciate you. We're so glad you're following the channel, but you should know we speak to a national audience. So some things will be ahead of you, but when it's your turn, we're on it. So we're up here in Michigan chasing smallmouth. We're going out today throwing light tackle. We're throwing small swim baits, Kitek, dark sleeper. We'll be throwing the tube, the hair jig, a lot of that fun stuff. And I think we're going to have a really good day. Let's get to it. Yeah, I like that there's super deep water coming. Really shallow bay. We should be back here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you guys could hear what I was saying, probably not. I was saying right when he bit that I really liked that there was deep water coming into this shallow bay. It's really deep. We're in 20 plus foot right here and right around the corners, five, six feet deep. These smallmouth early season love that quick deep water access. But when you get sunny afternoons, they pop right up into just a few feet of water. When the wind is blowing like this, we throw all reaction. That was on the, that was a 3.8 Kitek on the tactical finesse head. We'll throw the swim bait, we'll throw the jerk bait, the hair jig, all those fast moving baits when there's a little bit of chop because you can cover water quickly and these fish get super aggressive. But if it lays down, if it gets slick, that's when we turn to a lot of the really finesse, slow moving drop shot, Ned rig, tube, the slow moving presentations to keep catching those fish. Nice. I think I got a real one. I think you do too. I'm way out there too. Oh yeah. Come on. Oh, got him. All right. Three point three. Kitek with a guppy head. Nice fish. <laughs> Nice. Rock bat. First one ever landed. Got him?
right species and everything. <laughs> nice work. <laughs> Yes. Oh, it's, an, it's another nice one. Nice fish. This was my childhood. For those of you wondering, he puts the beat down just about every time we go fishing, even now. Look at the fish with him. Need to cast in there? Ah, oh, it's all right. Yeah, that's a good one. Come here, buddy. Give him slack. Nicely done again. 3-3 three, three, electric shad. Little guppy head. He's back here doing work. Did he? Nice one on that 3.8 Kitek and the tactical head. My dad has been doing work with a little bit lighter line and that smaller Kitek. We're sticking to those bigger profiles, trying to get a big bite, but that doesn't always happen. So we're trying both methods. It's amazing with, with big smallmouth, particularly up north, Size of the bait does not necessarily dictate size of the fish. You can catch really big fish on really small stuff. It has more to do with conditions. If it's cloudy, if it's blowing, you can get away with more of that heavier line. If they're on oh. a... Oh, stuck? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was a tree. <laughs> if, um, if you've got broken up water, basically, you can get away with that heavier line, which is just a convenience. Then you can flip those fish, you can go with a little heavier hook. You know you're gonna get away with that. When they get more sensitive, if it gets higher sun, if it gets more slicked off, more calm, then you get lighter and lighter and lighter on your line. You start throwing five and six pound fluoro as opposed to eight, 10, 12 pound fluoro. We never really go above that. Um, but you just adapt with the conditions more than you adapt to those baits. It's a handful of really key baits that catch those big fish. The Kitek, the Dark Sleeper, the Tube, the Ned Rig. You know, there's a handful of those key, key baits that you want to be switching between. Big old hook set in the back of the boat. I thought he had a giant on. All right, let's get back to it. Mad though. <laughs> Hold on. Get in here. 
I'm just slow crawling the dark, dark sleeper on the bottom. That's why I'm catching mine. Got him? Nice. That's the spot. That's a good one. Fish. Can you net him? Net him? I get him. I got him now. Okay. Nicely Whoa. done. Oh, yeah. That was a good one. I got all the little ones out of the way. <laughs> you got the little ones out? Made a little room? That's a nice fish. Good job. Nice one. That one came on that dark sleeper. So, the 3.3 Kitek with the guppy head caught one more. Nice fish. Mouth. <laughs> that was awesome. That is cool. Super subtle bite. a large mouth. Got a big head. <laughs> yep. No way. That's a pretty one. Pretty northern largy. We'll always take those. Not necessarily what we drive up north for. Plenty of them at home. But we'll always take them. Fish. Careful of that talon. That's a nice one. And what about that one? That is a great fish. <laughs> Do 
beautiful fish. That is a beautiful fish. You yes. usually kick our rears, but it's been a while since it's been this one-sided. <laughs> Nicely done. Yeah, that's a good one. No, it's all right. Yeah. Nice fish. So far today has been just super simple fishing. We've, you got him? Oh, it's the bottom. We've each latched onto a different bait and we're just going. And if it seems like we're just blindly casting, we are. So in the mornings this time of year, smallmouth will tend to hang on those deeper banks near shallow water. And most of these natural northern lakes, not just Michigan, all the way across the north, most of the natural lakes have huge expansive shallow flats in them and then some deep water access. So where that deep water comes up and meets those flats, that's where you'll see those fish in the morning. And then as that sun starts to get up, those fish will push hard up onto those flats. Now a largemouth, when they push like that, that's typically a permanent move. Not so for smallmouth. They will sometimes turn around and back back off. It's because up here in the north, you have these really cold nights. So you have huge temperature swings throughout the course of the day. When that's going on, those fish will take advantage. They'll move up, they'll feed on whatever else might be up there in that warm water, and then they back back out. So we are moving up onto these flats and just fan casting in three to eight feet of water just blindly covering water, that's how we're picking off these fish. Now, if there is a blade of grass starting to grow, if there is a rock, a stick, a stump, anything on that flat, that fish will sit right on it. But if there's not, they'll just be spread out. Nice fish. Hello, friend. Awesome. Little guy, but I'll take him. Hey, buddy. Throwing that hair jig. That is an overlooked presentation. Not by guys in the north. Guys in the north throw them, but by people visiting the north. That is very overlooked. Just steady swimming that hair jig. Catches smallmouth. Right on this side. <clears throat> ha! I paused to move a rod and he ate it. That's a good one. It's a really nice one. This is five pounds, so I will take the net. Coming right up. Sweet. Thank you. <clears throat> I was steady reeling the bait. 
they stopped to move a rod on the deck and he ate it while it was dropping. Nice fish. We'll see. Punched right through. Nice fish. <laughs> oh, got him. That is so much fun. All right, guys, I think on that one, we're gonna have to wrap it up. We've got big thunderheads building in the background and that's not something we're gonna mess with, so we'll get out of here. But essentially we caught them on four baits today. Again, chasing these smallmouth can be really simple. It's just the putting in the time. So my dad caught all but one of his fish on a 3.3 Kitek on a guppy head throwing six pound leader on a 10 or 12 pound braid. CC, she threw a dark sleeper the whole time. Now here's something with the dark sleeper because we say dark sleeper and that's easy enough. And then you click the link and you see lists of dark sleepers. The dark sleeper comes in three sizes and some different weights. If I could only pick one ever, it will always be three inch, half ounce period. That's where I start. After that, I go to three inch, three quarter ounce. The reason why is that the dark sleeper will tend to, to lift the, the nose. So it'll tend to come up more than other swim baits. So go a little bit heavier. So I was throwing the Kitek on the tactical finesse head, three eighths ounce head, 3.8 Kitek. So I'm throwing a three eighths. CC's throwing a half to fish a dark sleeper in the exact same place. So keep that in mind. You fish them heavier than you would expect. Uh, she was throwing the Wagasaki color. There's three or four or five colors that we really like, but again, uh, and then the hair jig. That was the other one. And then my dad's last fish came on the electric bluegill color. He's been throwing uh, electric shad all day. That last one was on electric bluegill. Uh, Again, I'll link everything in the video description for you. I'll link the gear we were using. Like I was throwing the hair jig on five pound fluoro. And that makes a difference because that hair jig is super subtle. It's going slow through the water column. So I like really, really light line. Plus it's a really light head. So it's nice to throw it on light line. You can get more distance. Whereas CC throwing the dark sleeper, me throwing the Kitek, 10 or 12 pound fluoro. And you can throw that thing a mile. Hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along with us. We're just up here on vacation. We will be back with Tim and Tanya and the family very soon. Their kids are still in school. So they were a little more restricted. We were able to get on the road sooner, but we'll see them again soon. And uh, we're just gonna keep having a blast up here until then. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon.